Welcome folks. Hello. So while we can't all see you as you come in, we're happy you're joining us here today for our Brampton Artists in Residence program. This is the first program of its kind and we're excited to be here with our friends in the library. Uh, my name is Katie Belshaw and I'm the programming coordinator with the Brampton Arts Organization. For those of you who may not be familiar with us at the Brampton Arts Org, we are an organization that's incubating within the city of Brampton, set to become our own independent not-for-profit arm's length organization in 2024. Our focus is on growing, celebrating, and advocating for the arts sector in Brampton and offering programs like these ones that support yourselves as artists and arts organizations uh, living in Brampton. And this program has really been a long time coming, so we're super thankful to our friends at the library for making this a reality for us to be able to host, host this at the Brampton Four Corners Library. Um, before we get into the session today, perhaps I'll just do some brief introductions. So I have two colleagues on the line today, Michael Vickers, who is our senior program lead at BOW. So I think folks can uh, see you, Michael, if you want to give a quick wave, feel free to say hi. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for being here. We're really excited to kick off this program with this info session. Um, my pronouns are he, him, and yeah, look forward to um, going through everything together. And then we also have from the BOW team, Amanda Folds, who is our new education and outreach uh, program coordinator. So Amanda, uh, if you'd like to say a quick hi as well. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Amanda, my pronouns are she, her, and yeah, I'm very excited for this program and I'm looking forward to um, this webinar. Yeah. Okay, and then from the library team, we have June Dickinson, who's the manager of marketing and communications. June, who I think names show up as Henny right now, but if you'd like to say hello. Hi everyone, I'm June Dickinson and my pronouns are she, her. I'm the manager of marketing and communications and we are so thrilled about this program and welcoming the artist into our Four Corners branch uh, in downtown Brampton. Okay, and then lastly, we have on the line with us today as well, Henny Musa is the manager of programs and outreach with the library. So Henny, if you wanna say a quick hello. Hi everyone, my name is Henny. I'm really excited to be here. My pronouns are she, her, and I'm looking forward to today's presentation. Okay, wonderful. And then I believe we also have in the audience today the branch manager for Four Corners Library, Neil. Um, and we may get to hear from Neil as we get to the Q&A portion of our session later on. So a brief overview of um, the session today. We're going to review the program in full. We're going to go through what the program supports, the timing, who can apply, talk about the space itself at Four Corners, go through selection criteria. We'll do an overview of the application as well, do a virtual field trip to review the application form together, and then we'll head into our Q&A and discussion portion. So between Michael and myself, and myself uh, we'll probably take about half an hour of talking at you, a bit of a lecture, um, but I encourage you to think of questions along the way. A few housekeeping notes. We are going to be using the Q&A box to field our questions today just to help us get organized. So you should be able to find the Q&A box on the bottom of your Zoom screen. And if folks are having any issues accessing it, I believe the chat is open. So feel free to reach out to Amanda and she can facilitate getting a question into the chat if you need. Um, so that'll be helping keep us organized. And I think we can jump in and get started from here. So Michael, I'm gonna pass it over to you to talk through the program in general. Thanks so much, Katie. So I guess off the bat, it's really just talking broadly about, you know, what is this program for and, and what sort of initiatives are we looking to, to, to bring into the library through this program and, and sort of, you know, what is this program all about? So this program is open to Brampton-based artists, arts organizations, and collectives working in any artistic discipline. So I think that's really important to stress. This, this isn't just for visual arts. Um, you could be a writer, you could be a performer, you could be a musician, you could be a dance troupe, you can uh, be a, an ad hoc sort of collective or an arts organization that would like some space. Um, it's really, we try to keep it as broad and open as possible. So. Um, the key there is being being from Brampton and really focusing on undertaking a community focused artist residency, which I think is something worth stressing is that, you know, this program is really not just about offering a space for you to um, 
to make work and to sort of quietly use as a studio space for for the three months but hoping for it to be a project that involves the community engages the community you know um, we'll speak more about like open office hours things like that um, and so the location will be at the four corners library branch which is right here downtown um, that's the only location for what it's worth if you're wondering if other locations are potential unfortunately not this time but we hope that maybe in due course we can expand this uh, and so the artist fee slash honorarium is eight thousand dollars total and that is to cover all of the different associated costs with you being there making sure the artists are all paid professional fees if you are involving other folks um, and that's the total amount what comes with the um the for the recipient of, of this program uh, so as i mentioned you'll have access to a free dedicated private workspace within the library during regular operating hours of the four corners branch so it doesn't mean that you'll have uh, evening access after um, library hours or, or 24 hour access it's just within the regular operating hours of the library which you can find online um, you'll have your own dedicated workspace um, to clarify and you'll see pictures as well that workspace is a room so you'll essentially have a room within the library to call your own as a studio as an office as a community space um, whatever you'd like to 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 use it for um, it's key that you'll be holding open public office hours so within your um, pitch essentially i think it's really key to mention that you're you're talking about how you, the public will be able to see what's happening in your studio and in your space uh, and engage with it in different ways um, a requirement as well is to speak to how you'll be delivering free public arts programming. So again, uh, although it's very important for artists to have space to just quietly sort of work on your practice, a big part of this is how are you going to be um, offering things to the community as well that, that the public can engage in. So they're able to see what you're working on, they're able to, to get involved. Um, and, and ultimately, this is an opportunity to explore your practice in a community setting and engage with the library and its surrounding neighborhood. So, I think there's a lot of potential for um, engaging with folks that are already coming to the library, bringing new audiences in. Obviously, there's all sorts of activity that's already happening at the library. How can perhaps overlap? I think one of one of the many reasons that we're like so excited to work with the library on this is that they're very open to new ideas um, and and experimentation. So that's something to consider here too. I think as you're all seeing, libraries are changing from what you maybe have pictured as this very quiet hush. Um, place to although there's a place for that you know it's really a community hub so how does your project sort of speak to that next slide so which of the different activities that we sort of talked about because obviously i was speaking quite big picture there are actually eligible and i think that's really something important for you to to make sure you review when you're applying is does does what you're hoping to put forward um, check one of these boxes and if you're unsure you can reach out to us as well but um, artistic research so though you maybe want to use a space to do just focused work and research again how does that involve the community community engaged projects and programming visual and media arts installations maybe you want to use the room to set up a, an exhibition or you know a site specific work screenings and exhibitions workshops education and mentorship performances and other arts activities open to the public um, permanent artwork isn't eligible for funding through this residency program so i think that's something to stress that you know ultimately we'll be using the space for these three months and then cleaning up like we weren't there before so this isn't really an opportunity for um, proposing say a mural or something like that in the space it's really about coming in using it as your own and then and then cleaning up and and, and we're off after this the three months um, Next slide. Okay, so in terms of timing for the residency, the residency itself will take place between September, October, and November. And uh, the schedule of the residency itself is going to depend on what's going on with the branch, uh, what capacity there is there, what supports needed for your project, what the scope and scale of whatever it is that you may be proposing. So that's all flexible and you'll be working with both us at BOW and uh, branch manager and other Brampton Library staff to determine what schedule is going to make sense. Um, 
and that will be something that will be developed right off the bat with those folks. Go to our next slide. And in terms of who this program is for and who can apply, it's open to professional artists, not-for-profit arts organizations, as well as arts collectives. And as Michael was saying earlier, that's all discipline. So you don't just have to be a visual artist, you can be literary arts, writing, visual arts, performing arts, music. There's tons of opportunities. We welcome interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary work as well. Um, and we'll review here, I believe the next slide is, uh, what the heck is a professional artist and, and sort of why are we using that term? And although this definition is for professional artists and comes from Ontario Arts Council, we're sort of using it um, a bit interchangeably for arts organizations as well. So what the Arts uh, Council um, determines as a professional artist is someone who has developed skills through training or practice and is recognized by artists working in the same discipline as themselves, uh, in addition to having a history of presenting work and someone who also seeks payment for their work. And so we also recognize within this definition that there are systemic barriers that folks face in terms of limited opportunity for mainstream presentation of work. And there is some flexibility when the selection panel is reviewing applications. So I wouldn't have this definition scare anyone off from applying. Um, okay. So there is specific eligibility criteria that we have for both individual artists and arts organizations and collectives. And I believe Amanda is linking either in the chat or the Q&A box for folks right now, uh, a link to the program guidelines, which details all of this information that Michael and I are going through right now. So you're able to refer to it later. We'll also be emailing all the slides out and the recording of the presentation. So as an individual, uh, unfortunately, undergraduate students are not eligible to apply to the program. You have to be located in the city of Brampton. Um, and for us, that means we're following some of the similar uh, criteria as the Advanced Brampton Fund, but we will need to see proof of a residential address within the city. And you have to have been located in Brampton for a minimum of 12 months prior to the date of the application itself. In terms of criteria for organizations and collectives, Similar to individuals, the organization or collective needs to be located within the city of Brampton. And only one to two members of the organization can have access to the space at the library. This is just to ensure that there's adequate space for folks to come and engage with the work that you'll be doing and really just have one lead go-to person for the organization in charge of the residency as a whole. The, um, so the applicant that is applying on behalf of the organization should have a residential address within the city of Brampton and have been living in the city of Brampton for 12 months prior. So if there are any individual questions that come up around your own eligibility, eligibility, we may not have time to discuss those in detail today, but I'm welcome, we welcome you to send an email and we can have a more personalized conversation if there are some questions that are a bit more personalized. So next, we've got some images of what the space looks like itself. So Michael, perhaps if you wanna chat, us, chat with us about what, what this space looks like and a bit more about how it can be used. Thanks so much, Katie. So as you see from the room, uh, it's uh, a room off of the, the large main sort of um, library space. So it is your own office that, as you see, is currently set up with a bit of like a, almost like a classroom setting with desks off to the side, chairs, uh, a whiteboard. Um, there isn't a window in the space, um, but you have uh, those different walls that you could perhaps use as a work surface. Uh, it's about 13 feet uh, by 16 feet. You see laminate flooring. Um, and yeah, I think uh, limited natural light. Oh, thanks, Katie. So as you see there, you can see the, the large sort of main library space, and that's a room off to the side there. Um, as far as accessibility access, it has an accessible entrance. Uh, there are washrooms on the first and second floor that have a handicap door push with uh, an accessible washroom stall. Um, this is on the second floor, uh, but there, I'm sorry, I misspoke earlier. There is no um, handicap door push button to operate the workspace, but it can be propped open. Um, and if there are specific accommodations or 
um, supports that you would require or, or would be of support to you, you know, please do make sure you, you mention that in your application as well. Um, we strive to do as much as we can to um, support in, in that regard. Um, as mentioned, it's roughly 13 feet by 16 feet wide. Okay, so now moving on to selection criteria. And all of this information, again, is on the program guidelines that you can refer to later. But the key pieces of information that the selection panel is going to be looking at when we're reviewing your applications are artistic merit, impact, and viability. So we'll be able to unpack these ideas a little bit further as we get into the application itself and look at how do I demonstrate artistic merit? How do I talk about my impact in a clear and concise way? But roughly, um, we're looking at well, what you've proposed and how it's suitable for the room itself, for the library, for the neighborhood that the library is in. What's the quality of experience that you're proposing for the participants, for the folks that are using the library? And what are the benefits to the broader community as a whole and more largely Brampton? Um, based on the information that you've provided us with, what is your ability uh, to carry out the proposed project? And then another important piece is the budget of the $8,000 in terms of how you're spending it. Does it seem feasible? Uh, is it viable? Are you gonna be able to purchase all the materials that you need? Uh, does it look realistic? And then a quick note, I don't think we've mentioned this yet, but there is additional funding available for uh, accessibility components of your workshop. So you'll find all the information on that in the program guidelines. Um, but for instance, if you wanted to have ASL interpreters, um, if there was an elder you wanted to work with, there is additional budget outside of the core um, program budget to support some of those initiatives as they're needed uh, in your project. And when we look at who is on the selection panel, Really, it's uh, your peers and your community members. The panel itself is going to be made up of uh, one BOW staff. We'll have one to two Brenton Library staff. There will be at least one community uh, member and a local artist as well re represented on the panel. So really, you're speaking to your peers. Uh, the panel will also be interdisciplinary to ensure that, there, that folks can look at your application and have understanding of it against a broad range of initiatives and disciplines. So that's who will be looking at the applications themselves. So I'll pass it over to Michael again to give us a brief overview of what the application itself will look like. And then once we've gone through a bit of a review, we'll do a virtual field trip and I'll open the application and we can talk through it together. Thanks so much. So for this sort of broad overview, as Katie mentioned, we'll go through and through the finer details in a, in a moment. Um, ultimately, we'd like to, to learn about your project in a few different ways. So initially, uh, the project summary. So this is you know 100 words. Really, I'd say this is where you're able to give your quick, short elevator pitch for your project. Obviously, we're going through a, a huge number of, of applications. Project summary is to um, give a quick overview of you know the who, what, why, where of your project and, and the impact that you think it'll have, um, listing out your project contributors. And then the project overview, up to a, a thousand words. Um, I think again, looking at ways that you can write your application in a way that, that um, is clear, concise, uh, gives the necessary details. Um, frankly, like checks all of the boxes of the different things that we are requiring the information on that we're talking through here. Um, but but I'd say at that times, you know, less less can be more as well for some things like this. And I'm not saying to not give too much information, but I just think don't be intimidated necessarily by the word count either, because that is, you know, a, a maximum and you don't feel like you have to hit a thousand words if you think that you've you've gotten your point across well um, in less than that. Speaking to your artistic goals and objectives for the project, um, what do you hope for yourself, for the community? Um, what are you hoping at the end of the three months to be able to, to show for the project? Um, you know, we hope that I think this can also be an opportunity to then um, create a body of work or a project that you could then move on and, and could be part of something even larger. Perhaps you wanted to take what you do here and then apply for, for more funding to, to continue it. So just thinking through, you know, what what are the goals of the project? What are the objectives? Maybe how will you know that you've, you've succeeded in some of that work? 
what's your outreach and audience development plan? So how are you going to make sure that you spread word with our support uh, about what you're up to and, and make sure people come? Because I think you know, that's a key part of it, as we've spoken about, is making sure that the community is able to, to participate and is aware of what you're doing. And um, obviously we can support you through our, our channels, but also what's the, what's the game plan there? as part of the larger, this is the next item, the, the larger project work plan. So really being able to, to break down for us um, realistic timelines and, and a work plan for how you use the three months. You know, I think we certainly wouldn't expect on day one to show up and, and have everything finished, but how does, what does, um, what are sort of those benchmarks for success for your project? Where do you hope to be at the end of month one? Where in month two, and then at the end? Um, project budget, as Katie mentioned, um, as detailed as possible, a breakdown of how you'll spend the money. I think things that we've touched on that are important to us are making sure that um, folks are paid fairly. Obviously, in the arts, it can often be uh, a culture where artists, um, yeah, are working for exposure. And, and we are, really want to make sure that artists are paid proper uh, artist fees. We use CARFAC. You've heard of that as a guideline for how much folks should be paid for different different kinds of work. And we can share a link to that in the chat as well, the CARFAC artist fee guidelines. Um, I think it's also worth saying that um, ensure that you include yourself in that. And we want to make sure that you, you know, don't think you have to be afraid to, to speak to how much you'll be paying yourself um, from this project. And uh, because that would be a red flag for us if we realized actually that, that you're not compensating yourself for your own time and involvement in the project. Uh, an artist or organization statement, again, sort of the elevator pitch for who you are and or who your organization is. Um, a biography of three sentences, an artist resume, something that Katie touched on as well as this term sort of professional artist um, can be intimidating for folks and we certainly don't want that to be the case. So your artist resume could be uh, a statement of experience. You know, if you don't necessarily have a professional CV, it could just be speaking to where you've exhibited your work, what you'd like to do, uh, you know, where, it, um, yeah, what your, your sort of professional history is, um, but don't be intimidated if you don't have a professional CV. And then any additional information. So perhaps there's uh, a few ex extra things that you wanted to add in for context or for clarity, or I think you know it's really important to put yourself in our shoes. And if there are things that you think we might be confused by, how can you make that clear? Or how can you give us the information so that we don't need to be concerned or, or flag items of worry? Key things to keep in mind, and I've touched on a few of these. Clear and concise language that answers the question. If we can't understand um, what exactly you're hoping to achieve with the project, it's very hard for us to, to say yes to it. Um, and so I think the more that you can keep things simple, um, there's no need to use overly academic language um, to try and um, impress anybody, frankly. Like we're all, we're all here to, to learn more about what the project is exactly and, and feel free to, to spell it out for us as clearly as a following the word count. So again, um, going way over the word count uh, only hurts your application, it doesn't help it. Um, help the selection panel quickly understand your idea and, and don't leave us with any questions or confuse, confusion. So really, again, there'll be a few different people at the table and you would want to make sure that all of the different questions that could come up could be answered. Um, a good suggestion here is just having a friend who isn't familiar with your practice or the work that you do um, read it over and tell you if they understand it. So if uh, I encourage you perhaps in small groups even to consider doing this for each other. Um, thinking through if it's as legible and, and clear as you hope it to be, because it's very easy when you work on an application and you understand exactly what you're hoping to achieve um, to think that it's clear to others, but but supporting, getting the support you need from an, another artist or peer to, to review your application. And then the last point, which I think I've made clear is just really avoiding any filler. There's no need to, um, to add in more language than is necessary. There's no need to, to bust out a thesaurus and start using fancy art terminology if it, if it isn't appropriate, because if anything, it'll just muddy the application. Uh, is this me still kidding? Sure, if you wanna go. Okay, yeah, I was yeah. about to, and then I wasn't sure. Uh, so who is on the selection panel? And and oh. some questions. Oh, that's uh, we already ran We're through that. It'll title, be a, but that'll some be, questions yeah. to ask, ask yourself for the application, anyways. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but just to quickly touch on that again, as Katie mentioned, it'll be a mix of um, community members, uh, fellow artists, 
DAO staff and, and library staff. And if you think through all the different things that we'll all be looking for, I think that's important to consider. Uh, questions to ask yourself, um, who is the project serving and supporting? So uh, is it uh, something that we can clearly see the community benefit in, or is it something that doesn't look like it's actually supporting many folks other than just the applicant? Um, and I think it's fair to say that that the that we we hope for for an impact that's deep and meaningful. It doesn't have to be necessarily broad, but but who is it serving and supporting, and and is that clear to us? Why is the project needed here in Brampton? So we know that you know, um, for example, we created this project because there's a lack of creative space in Brampton. So we came up with this project because we know it's so needed. So why is what you're doing important in the Brampton context specifically? Why would it make sense for Brampton Arts Organization and the library to support the program? I mean, on both of our websites, you can see our values, you can see our mission, you can see uh, our mandates. So how does what you're proposing link with what we're trying to do and trying to achieve? Um, I think that would obviously be a strength. Who is the audience? Who do you want to um, participate in the program, to view the program, to, to participate? And, and, and you know, who are you trying to reach? And then I guess lastly, like why are you the best person to be putting forward a project like this or to be doing it? Um, why do you make the most sense to be doing this? Again, these are the sorts of questions that we hope you ask yourself because the questions that we would be asking is, is this person really the best for that? Um, how does their experience relate to, to this? Um, and those are the sorts of concerns that, that would come up in the conversation. Support materials. So. Uh, we ask for up to three links to previous work. Uh, please make sure that you open up your permissions. You'd be surprised at how often um, we're sent links to a Google Drive or to a Vimeo uh, that we can't actually open. And with this many, you know, sort of applications that we'll be receiving, we won't necessarily have time to continue to follow up asking you to, to change the access settings. So three links to previous work that, uh, that you are sure is public. Again, that's something that you could send to a friend in advance to say, hey, can you just make sure that you can open this and view it and everything looks, looks good? Make sure you check it yourself. Um, if, if we open up the files and actually they look super pixelated, you're only doing your own uh, self a disservice. And obviously support material is a really important part of an application. Uh, you can submit digital images of visual art, script samples, music scores, poems, images, videos, audio, recordings, reference letters. We leave it quite broad and open. I think it's important to just stress the quality, right? So if you are submitting examples of um, previous artwork that you've made, like a very pixelated um, image that isn't, isn't, isn't very clear to, to see, isn't going to be the best way of, of sharing examples of your work. So just thinking through like, how could I make this as clear as possible? And it doesn't mean that you have to hire a professional phot photographer to document your work or anything like that, but just making sure that you're not doing yourself a disservice. Uh, and then making sure your support materials demonstrate a clear connection to your project. So as an example, if you said that you were going to be working on a new play uh, in, in, in the residency and you're gonna be spending three months working on this new piece of, of um, theater, um, but then all of your reference material are paintings that you did of something completely unrelated, that's not helpful to us. Uh, and doesn't, again, doesn't help sell your idea. So making sure that what you have included in your support materials, there's at least a clear connection to us. Um, and, and if you need to, you can also to speak to that in your application, why it, why it matters. Okay, so- is gonna go through the actual application. Yes. So I'll take a, a brief pause here and I'll stop sharing my screen and share my web browser. We'll walk through the application and take a look at the program guidelines together. And then once we've done that, we'll move into the Q&A portion of the session. So I'm gonna stop share here and I will reshare my screen. Okay, so here we have the web page for the program itself. And if uh, Amanda hasn't already linked this in the chat, I'll ask her to do so. You can find it right from the Brampton Arts Org website as well. Uh, it's also linked on all of our socials. 
So this is all the information that you're going to need to get yourself set up to apply and submit your application. And just a reminder that the application deadline is uh, August 13th, just before midnight. And my contact information is here for folks that may want to get in touch to discuss any parts of the application. You have the full program guidelines here, which I've just opened up right here. So I would give this a review in detail before uh, opening up the application itself. Um, a lot of this is information that we have covered today, but there's a few additional details that you'll find here that we may not have spoken to. And then we have the application linked here itself. So some key details about the application at the front. Then we have the application here with some eligibility screening and artist contact information at the beginning. So I'm just going to go through and write test for all of these. And then we'll get into some of the meatier parts of the application. The so voluntary self identification. And then here we get into this information about the project. I might suggest um, copying these questions and putting them into a Microsoft Word doc or Google doc to get started, typing them out in that um, application and then transferring them over because that'll help support you in figuring out your word count. And like Michael was saying, just because we say a thousand words doesn't necessarily mean that you need to give us a thousand. You could get your point across, say, in 500 words, or you may need the thousand. So just something to think about. And each question itself has some additional information, a little prompt about what we're asking for. Um, you have your artistic goals to write in. We, we've chatted about already in terms of how they're going to be supporting your practice. We have the outreach and audience development portion, where you have 500 words to write. How are you going to reach your audience? How will you market to them? Your project work plan, project budget. You can either link this in here or type it, whatever is going to be easiest for you and in a way that will be easy for the selection panel to see right away and know exactly what you're proposing. An artist or organization statement, a biography, a resume, uh, and then your additional information. So let me just go through here. I'm just going to write gibberish for our answers. And then we'll go on to the next section. And then I believe in our next section, we have our support materials. Yes. So here is where you're going to link to us your support materials. Unfortunately, Microsoft Forms uh, doesn't allow for um, uploading files. And within the city of Brampton structure, Microsoft Forms is the platform that we use. So that's the reason for the links. So I would ask you to link them here. Uh, we don't necessarily need three samples. If you think two samples are enough for us to have a holistic view of your project and what you're proposing, um, then that, that's totally appropriate. And then you have some declarations here um, just to let us know that you've read and uh, agree to the regulations and terms that we've outlined in the program guidelines um, that both as individual or organizational applicants, your organizations or yourself are located in Brampton. You are the artist named in the application and that you do have creative and financial control to submit the work. And so once you've submitted the application, uh, you will receive an email notification that it's been sent in. And we are giving ourselves two calendar months to reply, although you'll likely hear from us a bit sooner. We just wanna make sure that we have time to get everything organized, set up our selection panel and get back to folks in a good way. Um, so I'm gonna stop sharing my screen here and we will pull up the PowerPoint again. And then we can get into our Q&A section. So I believe the last pieces on the PowerPoint are contact information, as well as some resources that can be shared. So let me see if I can change. So here we are. So there's my contact information for folks to follow up. Um, also a note there that the only avenue through which we are able to receive um, questions and comments is via email. 
uh, we get a lot of messages to our Instagram and through other social platforms, but we ask you please reach out via email. And then the last slide that I'll share here is just a few resources that folks may find helpful as you begin your application. So the Artist Producer Resource by Generator is, uh, has lots of budget templates, project work plan templates. Um, the organization is primarily based around performing arts, but the templates on this website are applicable for, for everyone. We also have a previous power hour we've run on writing artist statements and bios. So you'll find the recording there if you'd like to take a look at that session. And then a link on sharing Google Drive files if that is the platform that you'll be using that could be of help. So I'm gonna stop sharing again. And perhaps what I'll ask is, um, Michael, uh, Junior, Henny, is there any, anything else you'd like to add before we hop into Q&A? Nope, all good. You covered everything. Okay. So what I'll ask then is, Amanda, if you want to open up the Q&A chat box and maybe bring us questions one by one that Michael and I and uh, our friends at the library, we can begin to get, get to. Sure. Okay. Um, I'm going to try the answer live button. Let's see what that does. Um, okay. We have a lot of questions about, I guess, like eligibility for artists and what um, community members mean in terms of regions. So um, someone's asking if there are other artists involved in the project, can they be outside of Brampton? Okay. Well, I would say that Primarily the artists that are participating in the program and especially the, the lead artist needs to be located in Brampton as a definite. I would say that the majority of folks involved in the project would need to be Brampton based. And if there was a reason to involve another project contributor from outside, just clearly demonstrating in your application why that makes sense, why that skill set is uh, bringing something additional to the project. Um, that would warrant themselves needing to be from outside of Brampton. Okay, and then so similar to that question, someone's asking if um, the community members that are listed, do they also, um, are they only allowed to be Brampton residents? I guess. Maybe Nasheed, you can confirm uh, or provide a little bit more clarity if you meant like the community that you're serving or the community is like the artist. Mm -hmm. So I think similar to, to the question we just got around, can uh, different artists outside of Brampton work on the project? I think what that, uh, that piece of the application that the person may be referring to is getting at what community members is the project serving, the community members being those in the local vicinity to Four Corners Library or other residents in Brampton. So the primary, um, the the primary folks that this program is serving and supporting and funding are those from Brampton. And if there are is a scope outside of that to clearly demonstrate that in your application uh, and to make sure that it's not a 50-50 split from Brampton to other GTA folks, but I would say at least like an 80-90% um, Brampton focused project and supported. Okay, uh, we have someone asking if they recently moved from Brampton to another city, uh, can they still be considered for participation? So unfortunately, in our pro program guidelines, our eligibility criteria is that the person that gets funded, either the organization or the artists themselves, if they've been located within Brampton for at least the last 12 um, months. Uh, and we're following the eligibility criteria that comes from the advanced Brampton fund there. And um, so that's, that's, uh, that's the answer. Um, I'm going to go back to the top. All right. So um, this is more for when you're in the residency and you're conducting public programming. If someone is a writer, um, how can they engage the community while being in the space? Is it like reaching out to uh, folks to have a reading or researching human experiences? I think it could be both. Go ahead, Michael. 
No, that's, I'll let you go for it. I just want you to be on the hook for all the answers. Go oh. ahead. Uh, it could be both. It could be both. Research doesn't necessarily need to be um, like tangibly output driven, if that makes sense. It could just be you supporting your practice a bit more internally. You could think through offering mentorship, so inviting other local writers to come into the space. Um, you could consider hosting writing circles amongst other writers and peers in Brampton. Um, the program output doesn't necessarily need to be 100% general public. It could be a bit more closed if uh, you are supporting just writers in that sense, and that's what made sense for your project. I don't know if you'd have anything to add, Michael. No, no, that was perfect. Thank you. Okay, another question about eligibility. If I have not sold work, but my artwork um, has won competitions in the past and I've conducted private art lessons, am I eligible? Um, I do work a full-time job, uh, but the income from art is not reliable. So I guess just asking about uh, the term professional artist again. Yeah, that certainly sounds like you're a professional artist. It, it isn't tied at all to the commercial success that you've had as an artist. So I think if you're exhibiting your work and presenting it, it sounds like you're also teaching, then, then I think just being able to articulate that in your application. But um, no, a professional artist doesn't necessarily have to be um, solely existing off of the income that they make from their practice. Because um, I think those artists are, are very, very few and, and far between and quite lucky. So no, that's certainly not an expectation at all. Okay, thank you, Michael. Um, we have another question. Uh, they say, hello, this is Harita. Um, they have a question about if the activities have to be done, have to be continuous and ongoing, um, or can they be one-time workshops? I'm thinking this relates to the programming for the community. So the programs that you present as a part of the program don't necessarily need to be continuous. They could be one-off workshops. Um, and I believe we listed the minimum number in the program guidelines, which I can't remember off the top of my head right now, um, but I'd welcome you to take a look. So certainly they could be, it could be a trio of workshops that are meant to be taken in succession or as part of a whole, or it could be one workshop on, a, on this topic and another one on something totally different or one is more of a research session, or one is more mentorship focused, and the other one is more open. So there's a lot of flexibility in terms of what, what gets presented. The limitations um, will come in when you're meeting with the branch manager and the library to see what constraints that, that you'll be working with um, from that perspective. Cool. Thank you, Katie. Um, okay, working my way down the list. Uh, someone is asking if they can share Instagram posts uh, for their examples of work. Uh, yes, is what I would I would say. I think again, as we spoke to though, just the the, the best quality um, support material you can offer and with the most context is, is helpful, right? So uh, if you send a link to your Instagram, which is totally fine. Um, I think just making sure that that it's of good quality, we could, we'll read the, the description, we'd see the comments, different things like that, right? So I think just thinking, thinking that through, is that the best way to present your work? And again, I'm not saying yes or no, but I think just um, being thoughtful about what we'd see when we, when we click through like that. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Um, we have a question about the budget. So can a project be funded, be over the funded amount, sorry, of $8,000, and the balance of the project funds come from personal or other sources? Yes, I think. Uh, I don't know what, what you were going to say, Katie. I was going to say yes. I mean, I would encourage, I would encourage you just to consider what's realistic and what's viable, and I think that's where the, the flag would be for me is, is, you know, do are we are we through reading the application confident that you would actually still be able to complete the project if perhaps those other funds aren't secured? So if you said, um, you know, I'm doing a project that's sixteen thousand dollars, I'm going to get eight thousand dollars from you and eight thousand dollars from my own bank account. Um, what if something changes? Or what if you know? I think we we need to be confident that that the project would would go ahead regardless. 
my inclination would be to to not overextend yourself or to to overcommit. And I think eight thousand dollars we're really proud is like a quite large sum, a generous one. So I would I would stick to in and around that amount um, at most. Um, I don't know if you have any other thoughts, Katie. No, I agree. That's good advice. Okay, thank you. Um, another budget question since we're on that. Uh, they say, hi, Val, can the budget include providing honorariums to community members? Yes, absolutely. I think that's something that we would we would want to see and, and hope to see. And I think if if you're involving other people in your project and they're not being compensated, uh, that would be a, a flag, frankly, for us, unless you're able to like, speak to why they'd be volunteering and not being compensated. Um, so. So yes, absolutely. I think we would hope, obviously, if you're doing a big, large public program, like a reading, you can't necessarily offer a fee to every single person that's just attending as like an audience member. But if there are other people actively, you know, being involved in your project, we'd, we'd hope to see that they're, they're offered an honorarium as well. And in the application, we speak more to, to you know, what those amounts sh should or could be, because um, I can understand that, that could be daunting as well, trying to figure out, well, how much is fair? What would we want to see them being paid? And again, more of that information is all just in the application. Thank you. Um, I'm looking through. Okay, uh, for office hours, um, are the office hours open for whenever the library is open, or are there specific times? So yes, the office hours and all of the programming, the whole residency itself will be taking place within the operating hours of the library branch itself. Um, and the minimum amount of office hours that we're asking folks to provide per week is four regular weekly office hours. Um, and these office hours are for um, you to speak with library customers who are interested in your project, local artists, um, community members, any other folks that may be curious uh, of your project itself. And so we leave that to you to determine how you want to spread out those office hours. It may change when you get in the space itself or as you get your project going, um, but that's what we're asking of folks. Okay, thanks Katie. Um, working my way down the list for three links to previous works uh, for an art organization does that include my own personal works or student works so for an arts organization the links um, that may make the most sense it could be if your project uh, that the arts organization is leading and you're the key lead applicant is going to be um, like uh, I think it was paintings you said Amanda that they um, this they're just saying um, for the links that when you're providing links to previous works, um, if you're part of an art organization, does that include your own personal works? I see, okay. So I would say that could make sense if your organization and your discipline are aligned and you as the one of the leads for the organization are gonna be doing a bunch of programming based on your discipline. And that would give the selection panel um, confidence that you're the right person to be leading some of the activities that you propose. That may make sense. I think it would also make sense and the selection panel would wanna have information on the arts organization itself. So what are some documentation that the arts org may have? Has the organization previously run, run programming? Uh, is there any annual report or um, success stories from the organization, previous events that may make sense to be uploading as some of the information? So perhaps it may be a bit of a balance so it could make sense to submit your personal work. I would say only if it was aligned with the organization itself and the project being proposed. Thank you. Um, okay, I think we reviewed this, but someone's asking how many uh, art programs are you trying to hold in that duration? So I would need to pull up the program guidelines. So perhaps I'm gonna to have to come back to that question itself. Um, okay. But it's up to four office hours and I believe it's two or three, a minimum of two or three um, programs that are being held. Um, but it 
would also depend on the scope of your project too. So there could be some wiggle room to discuss with us at BOW um, and the library as well. Um, so I'll come back to that and uh, take a closer look at the program guidelines. Thanks for, for pulling that up, Katie. I think if I may just add to that, I think it's important to consider how that programming is a part of your application because I think for the selection panel, if it seems like something that's just sort of checking the box and saying, okay, well, in my first week of the residency, I'll do two workshops and then I'm done for the, the three months, uh, unless there's a specific reason for why it's so limited in scope and involvement with community for your project. Um, I think we would be hoping to see a more sort of sustained or, or regular um, public programming. Um, is that, would you agree, Katie? Is that fair to say? Yeah, I, I agree. And I see in the program guidelines, we have listed um, three uh, touch points, three engagements, three programs. Um, but like, and like Michael was saying, we're curious how those are aligned with the project as a whole, depending on the scope of what you're proposing as well. I think some consistency is always helpful for the community. So if you say, I'm going to be doing, and, and you put your own parameters on, on what you feel is reasonable, but on a certain day every week is when you'll have your open office hours so folks know that they can come and visit you and engage with your work then, or a regular sort of time for when those programs are can be helpful. Thank you. Um, our next question, someone's asking if the $8,000 grant is per artist or a total distributed for all. I'm thinking so they're asking. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Michael. So that's for the, the complete project, the entire amount. Um, yeah, so that would include everything from artist fees, honorariums, materials, um, additional support uh, materials or items or, or yeah, the complete project budget totals around 8,000. Uh, it would be amazing to be in a position to be able to offer multiple $8,000 artist fees, but, but not in year one. Okay, thank you. Okay, our next question. Currently, I am running an art program with Summer Company and I'm looking for a space after summer, but I'm only 17. Can I have a guardian apply for me? Hmm. I think technically, yes. That guardian would then become the one who's responsible for the program as a whole. Um, and so they would be the one uh, committing to the declarations and to scope of the project. And they would need to be the key, the key lead with the project alongside um, yourself. That's what I would say. I don't know about you, Michael. Yeah, I would agree. I think it would just, again, be, it would have to be clear what the, the reasoning is and, it, and, and the guardian being involved in the project. Again, if it just seems like it's it's checking the box to be able to be eligible, um, then I don't think it would necessarily make sense. Um, I'd encourage you as a side note, if you're looking for space um, at all in the city, um, checking out the creative space catalog that we have on the Brampton Arts Org websites. We have over 200 different um, locations where you can do arts and culture activity across the city. Uh, if you are looking for somewhere to host project that you're interested in and libraries can be can be great for that you see the Brampton Entrepreneur Center downtown is another option so that's a, a side note but strictly as far as the eligibility goes I believe yeah if the guardian were to apply we would just want to to see that there's a clear connection between them and you um, and it's not just a way of of being able to apply nice okay thank you um I think we spoke about this as well, but someone's asking if you can speak more to the hours, the space is available and the hours the artist is required to spend in the space and the hours they are required to spend with the community. So I'm gonna to toss this one over to June or Henny to let us know if they know off the top of their heads the library hours of Four Corners. Yeah, sure. for sure. Do you want to Go take ahead. it, Drew? Okay, so no it's, uh, okay. it's it's uh, Monday to Thursday, 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. And then Fridays and Saturdays and Sundays, I believe, are 10 to 6. Exactly. Okay. 
So the scope of the project would need to take place within those hours. And I see too, Amanda, there's a few questions on, um, can I work full time and still participate in this resi res residency? The answer of which is yes, as long as you can accommodate uh, the library hours within your other employment, that's totally fine with us. Um, in terms of the number of hours that needs to be spent with community, we've set the minimum of four office hours per week throughout the course of three months. We've asked for a um, minimum of three public engagements over the course of the residency. In terms of hours spent on the residency itself, we're leaving it kind of open amongst those parameters for you to set based around what works within your schedule and the libraries, of course. Um, and that would be what you would be proposing to us in your work plan. Um, we know that everyone has different schedules and of course the residency needs to have some flexibility to it. Uh, I don't know, I see Junior still on video there, if you have anything to, to add from the library perspective. No, not at all, that's great. I'll, I'll take my video off. Okay, are we okay to move on to another question? Yeah, if you think we can answer that, yeah. Awesome, okay, so um, we have a question. Are artists and collectives able to work with library staff to facilitate workshops for community for the community during the course of the residency, leading up to an exhibition inside the library? So perhaps I'll put June and Henny on the spot again to begin to answer for us. Can fill in some blanks. Sure, there is an exhibition place within the library. The library does have the Four Corner Branch has a community art gallery wall that can be utilized. Um, and I guess it would really depend on the type of uh, project you're you are proposing to do. Mm -hmm. Katie and Michael, please feel free to add more. Yeah, that's pretty straightforward. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, for supporting uh, documentation for the application, are we allowed to submit a referral from a mentor? Definitely, yeah, please do. That would be a good one to submit amongst uh, like one of the three. We're certainly open to that. Nice, okay. Um, if, another if, one, oh, sorry, go ahead, Michael. I'm sorry to interrupt you there. I just, if, if the, Referee is um, comfortable, including their contact information would be lovely within that as well. If that happens to be something that relates necessarily to, to the project, if we have any questions, uh, if I just mentioned if, if possible to include that, that would be great. So that we can do any follow ups with them if we needed. Um, okay, uh, we have another question for the library. Do we have access to the library's resources? Can they be used? We actually welcome that. Okay. That was very straightforward. We love it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, library. Um, okay. Uh, someone has a question. They're asking if only one artist will be holding residency during this um, residency period. Will there only be one? Yes. We'll be granting one. Uh, one eight thousand dollars to one like an artist collective just one happening throughout this time cool. thank you katie um someone's asking for studio space and working in the library are we able to work with various materials of art like spray paint for example um, or alcohol inks resin or is there a limit to what kind of media we can work with So we have worked with resins and obviously we, we need to look at it in terms of the ventilation or whatnot. I believe the room is carpeted, so I would not recommend spray painting. Uh, but again, it's something that we could figure out how to make it work as long as it doesn't damage the room at the end of it. And it has to, the room has to be intact at the end of the uh, residen residency program. Okay, thank you. Sorry, Amanda, I recognize that we're at one o'clock now. Yeah. So perhaps for us as a panel, if we're able to stay for the next 10, 15 minutes, we can get through the rest of the questions. 
And for folks that need to drop off, feel free to do so. And then you'll have the recording afterwards uh, with the questions from us. Um, that sounds good. Should I keep going with the questions if we're all able to stay? Yeah, okay. Uh, so our next question for the studio, oh, we answered that one, sorry. Um, is everything that we present to the public free? Can the artist charge the public for anything while in the space? So no, the residency is meant to uh, support free programming available to the public and folks that are ac accessing office hours. So there's not meant to be any additional uh, cost for folks to participate. Okay, thank you, Katie. Our next question is about the budget. Would something like a laptop, music equipment, and uh, things like that be considered assets to use for the budget? We haven't necessarily placed any limitations on the budget like you would see in the Advanced Brampton Fund or even a grant with Ontario Arts Council or other uh, larger bodies. So I would, my advice here would perhaps be to demonstrate why that laptop or those materials are vital to um, the residency itself. Um, and to demonstrate to the panel that it's not just gonna be for personal use, but is of benefit to the project as a whole. I don't know what you would say, Michael. Yeah, I completely agree. I think it's just, again, making sure that it makes sense within the context of like the, the budget um, and being able to justify why, you know, I think <clears throat> you'll just be harming your application if it's unclear and there's any suspicion that, you know, you're using this program uh, as a way to just buy new equipment that you, you need anyways. Um, so I think really uh, looking at, at why, why it it's part of this project specifically, because I think questions that the panel would also ask itself is, well, you know, where else could that the equipment perhaps be obtained from? Could we actually offer it uh, or su support with, with rentals, different things like that. So I think as long as you're able to justify it, it's permissible. Um, as Katie said, we really didn't want to put, uh, we wanted to have as few barriers as possible. Um, Thanks, okay. Thank you both. Um, my next question, can you be a Brampton-based artist applying, uh, having to make artwork about Brampton and its community? Or is it possible to make artwork that we feel could make an impact on the community? I think both are certainly possible, both make sense. For us, it would just be demonstrating why either one works for you, the output, of it doesn't have to just be about Brampton or uh, Flower City or any of that. Um, it's really just the impetus for the project is just to be celebrating and supporting folks in Brampton and providing opportunities and access to art for folks in Brampton. So it doesn't necessarily mean that the project has to be about Brampton. So either of those options would be possible. Nice, thank you. Um, okay, this is kind of, I guess, a question for the library uh, from Nicole. She says, hello, as a musician, I'm wondering about the sound restrictions. If I was to run a two to three day audio recording workshop, would there be anything I would need to be aware of in terms of volume? Just trying to figure out if the library has the capacity for that and if it's appropriate. Thank you. Okay, I know that we're in the process of currently uh finalizing the recording studio. This project is a little bit outside of the recording studio. So I'm, so we would definitely have to kind of look at the sound level that will be produced out of it. Uh, so if, if it's like, if we're doing a musical performance in an auditorium, that's fine. But if you have, a, I don't know, like a rock band ensemble inside, inside that tiny room, that might be a bit of a, a concern for us. But in the room, usage of the room, that might be, that's where a lot of the limits could happen. But inside of the auditorium, we have a better opportunity in how to support that kind of endeavor. Hope I answered in a very rambly way. Thank you. Um, okay, 
Okay. Um, when you send artist bios and resumes, et cetera, do we type it in the application or just send a link of the documents if it's long? I guess this is more about the application process. I think a link is likely easier on our end for the selection panel, um, but you could drop in uh, just text as well if you need it. But I would suggest if you're able, a link is perfectly appropriate. Thank you. Um, I think we already talked about this, but someone's asking if there will only be one project approved, or if there were more projects approved, would that eight thousand dollars be split across multiple submissions? Uh, no, we'll be selecting one project for the eight thousand dollar amount. Okay, sounds good. Um, next question: Can we store or lock the studio area when we're not? there yes this it, it is a locked room so that's correct okay thank you my next question uh, sorry question uh, my project focus is something that is in its beginning stage so i don't have uh, do not have media related to its focus as yet how do I provide examples that help the panel understand the scope of the project? Can I just provide work that proves my abilities as an artist, or does the uh, summarized plan in my application suffice? So I think the question we got earlier about a reference center letter from a mentee, that could be a good uh, piece of material to include. Um, just a note from someone you previously worked with or is uh, respected as an artist in the community, um, hearing from, from someone like that in support of your work could be an option. I would say, yes, you could include previous work that you've done as long as it is related or that you've provided context as to why it's related. Um, and we do welcome applications from folks that may not have a full portfolio. So we definitely don't want that to be a deterrent. Um, I think that's what all that's what I have to add for now. Okay, thanks, Katie. Uh, next question: If I have a project that will take longer than three months, is that okay? No, the project scope needs to be completed within the three months of the residency itself. Okay. Um, this is a more general question to, I guess, provide some context about the project, but someone's asking, what are the reasons why an artist would like to do a residency? Um, I'm happy go to, to go. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, I think um, the value of having like a dedicated space to, to make and share work and to involve community, I think there are a lot of reasons um, why to pursue a, a product like this. For me, that would be the number one. Is just that we are, you know, part of this is addressing the the real lack of of studio space and creative space in Brampton. So, um, having had a studio before and run an organization that offers studio space, I just know that having a spot to go to to focus on your work could be so beneficial uh, and and a place to call your own to make work for a few months, um, especially if that is perhaps a little bit removed from your regular surroundings. So I think also, you know, this being within uh, a library setting somewhere um, somewhere different, somewhere where you'll be you know, actively engaging with the public and community members and obviously making work that involves them. So for me, that would be an appeal. Um, I think part of this project as well is, is the, the artist fee component. And I think also making sure that, you know, you're actually getting paid uh, and, uh, for your work and, and not, um, you know, not creating at a cost to yourself, but we're being actually supported and and valued, uh, I think, so often in the arts, you know, that, that isn't necessarily the case. And that's why we tried to make sure that we had uh, a good budget to put forward. So those would be a few reasons why I would consider applying. Yeah, yeah I think that's great. Okay, thanks, Michael. Um, okay, next question. I think we kind of talked about this already. Do artists need to clear the room each day? and remove their materials or can it be locked up in there? 
Uh, no, you don't need to clear the space. It can be, that's your space throughout the course of the residency and can be used for storage and can be locked at the end of the day. All right, thank you, Katie. Um, okay, next question is, are there any insurance requirements for applicants? So yes, you'll see on the program guidelines that uh, insurance is a requirement of the program along with potentially a vulnerable sector check, depending on the age group that you're proposing to work with. Um, so the insurance will depend on the scope of activities that you're um, presenting. So I would go ahead and get a few quotes online from different providers if you can, and include that in the budget for your project. That will also be something that the selection panel is looking for in terms of feasibility, and that you've thought through your project as a whole, um, that you have included a line for insurance and have a rough guesstimate there in terms of what it would cost. Okay, thank you. Okay, we're almost there. <laughs> Two more questions. After the main programming, can the resident artist set up an art market in the ex exhibit space for participants to sell their final art from the program? So I'm going to leave that with Penny or June. It could be a possibility. I think it depends on the capacity of the library and if they would be able to support that. Yeah, I don't know. I think is again, this goes back to the concept of capacity. Um, I'm more likely to recommend uh, joining existing markets. There's often a lot of markets that happen around that time. Um, so right now at the moment, we don't have any things in plan to create a market uh, around in November, December. But again, it's something that we would have to look at it based on capacity. June, did you want to add anything else? I, I totally agree. I think that, you know, we're creating awareness for a new program. And then if there's that opportunity to continue potentially with other organizations in the city um, and just flagging that it is the artist in residence program and the final project. And here are some opportunities to engage and potentially purchase. Mm -hmm. I think we'd be open to those discussions, definitely, but uh, too early on in the planning to know exactly how that would take shape, but that we're we're open to looking at ways, potentially it's not in the library, which we're, where everything is free, but potentially it's uh, in a, another community space with, with strong branding for the program itself. Mm -hmm. That sounds great. Thank you, June and Haiti. And our last question for now, can there be a target age group audience, for example, age groups uh, three to 10 years? Yes, we welcome folks to have a target age group or audience like that and welcome applications um, with those targets. Um, the key thing would be to explain why and if that's the only group that you're going to be engaging throughout the whole residency what would be the impact of that. So we don't necessarily want applications that are going to do it all for everyone because that's not possible. So it's really just um, explaining uh, how you're going to have that impact, why you're the right person to be working with that age group. And then if you are working with younger audiences, the library may require a vulnerable sector check as well. OK, well, I think that's everything. Yeah. So Thank you folks for sticking with us. If you're still here, if you're watching the recording later, thank you for sticking around. We're all very excited to see this program get off the ground as the first one and potentially to continue running it in partnership with the library. So we're excited to see what applications we get and what gets selected. Um, so thank you all for being here and we'll say goodbye. Have a good rest of your day. Bye everyone, thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you.